Hello, and greetings from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm Dr. Drew Klein, one of the interventional cardiologists and vascular and endovascular specialists here at Piedmont, Atlanta. And I have the pleasure of presenting on catheter intervention in the acute pulmonary embolism, how it saved my patient. And I've entitled this talk, Go Long, uh, for something that I think uh, you'll be welcome to see on a different approach to a patient with pulmonary embolism. I have no conflicts of interest either than uh, I am a member of both the interventional cardiology team and the vascular surgery team here at Piedmont, and I believe that we all need to work together to optimize outcomes. My presentation is a 24-year-old male presented to uh, Piedmont Fayette, one of our outside hospitals in September of 2019 with syncope. After injuring his football uh, or his knee during a uh, football game on Labor Day, he was laid up for about a week and uh, stated that he essentially noticed some shortness of breath while walking up the stairs. This is a possible history of uh, stroke at age 11. There was this question about whether or not he had vertebral artery dissection at that time. He's got a family history of a grandmother with DVTs in the past. Chest CT at the outside hospital, which we'll uh, go through, showed a large bilateral pulmonary embolism, right greater than left, with uh, marked RV strain. He started on a heparin drip and our PERT team, our pulmonary embolism response team received a uh, call at about uh, 4 a.m. with the ICU doctor, both at Piedmont Atlanta as well as Piedmont Fayette, myself, and one of the CT surgeons. The patient uh, was noted to be 89% SATs, tacky to 140s, and 100% on rebreather. Our core recommendations at that time as a team were do not intubate the patient. This is the wrong thing to be doing as someone with a massive um, pulmonary embolism, as you'll drop the preload and the patient usually arrests. Transfer uh, by helicopter immediately with 100 milligrams of TPA, uh, basically strapped to the stretcher. Uh, the patient on arrival here uh, at the helipad had a blood pressure 80 over 40, with uh, initially responding to some uh, levofed with a blood pressure 105 over 70. Heart was 134. He was a larger gentleman, 150 kilos. He was uh, sitting at uh, 45 degrees, clearly dysmic. He had a right sided S4 on exam and some swelling. In. His uh, case presentation in terms of his lab showed a creatinine of 1.4. He had evidence of, pulm of uh, liver congestion with an ASD LT that were elevated. He had a troponin of 1.2. This is his uh, chest CT here. As you'll notice as we scroll through here, he has a, a large uh, pulmonary embolism on both straddle, uh, saddle PE with extension to the right, uh, with basically no filling of the right lung. Uh, some Part, uh, paucity of filling on the left as well. You can see how large the RV is here in comparison to the LV as well. Uh, prominent bilateral pulmonary embolism, his chest x-ray was actually read as uh, no acute uh, process, which is interesting, but clearly had a saddle embolism. So what do you do next? I think the question is, you got a 75 year old, uh, pardon me, a 24 year old with a submassive to massive, probably borderline nine massive, He's hypotensive on arrival, 80 over 40. He was tachycardic, dysmic. Uh, you got a per team call. He's sick as a dog. And the question is, what, do you, what should we do? Uh, you can give him heparin alone. You can do catheter based therapy, and that includes catheter directed therapy with ECOS. You can do thrombectomy uh, with or without uh, penumbra, or NARI combination. You can do reduced uh, dose systemic uh, TPA. You can do full dose uh, TPA or you could bring them to uh, surgical embolectomy. So this is what we discussed in our first team call at 4 a.m. The first uh, biggest issue was to transfer the patient to uh, our main hospital for evaluation and also for backup with uh, ECMO. Uh, we proceeded with uh, immediately to the cardiac catheterization lab. Uh, we performed right heart catheterization. It was felt that we could, if needed, we could cannulate him in the cath lab easiest. Uh, his RA pressure was 11. His uh, cardiac index was markedly decreased. This is how sick these patients can be. Their index by FIC was 1.5, by thermal dilution 1.3. His wedge is 22, which is interesting. His PA pressure is actually not that high, which is interesting as well. Uh, but I think the cardiac index here is what struck us most uh, abruptly. Uh, this is a pulmonary angiogram that we performed in the cath lab. You can see the large uh, thrombus sitting in the saddle, uh, straddling with a, just absolutely no right upper flow uh, and extensive thrombus throughout the right uh, lower segment interlobar. Uh, the left uh, essentially looking the same with a large uh, thrombi sitting here in the main uh, left PA. And so our decisions here were, should we go with mechanical thrombectomy and RE, penumbra, uh, should we go catheter therapy with or without a loading dose? How much? How fast? 
I think, you know, in retrospect, I was thinking as I would go back and look at this case, I'd actually might consider an ARI. Um, however, we opted for ECOS for low threshold of bringing the patient back for the thrombectomy. We did not have the newest catheter at this time. So, uh, and it was, we like to do an ARI usually as a two attending case, just because we uh, have a, uh, seem to have a better success with um, four hands instead of two. And in this case, with the patient, we felt like we should load them with a TPA, get them going and wash them carefully. And if we have to bring them back for a mechanical thrombectomy, we would do that. I think either approach would be valid. This was his echo about 24 hours. Again, after 20 milligrams per lung, and we did give him a five milligram for each lung right off the bat. His RV was still a little bit dilated. He still had pulmonary hypertension. But the question was like, what should we do? And after extensive discussions amongst the whole team, we thought we should keep going. He's clinically improving. Uh, should we bring him back from thrombectomy? Uh, this is where his vitals turned out. So after viral resuscitation and a little bit of leave fed that was able to be weaned off, sorry, when it came down from 127 to 84, uh, stabilized out of there, blood pressure looked okay. His oxygen level went from 94% on 100% on a breather down to 98% on eight liters for 24 hours. And then at 48 hours, he's down 92% of room air and 100% on two liters. Uh, this is a CT. We actually decided to uh, go longer uh, and give him almost 40 milligrams of TPA uh, for almost a, um, a two days uh, for TPA. What you'll see here, he's got pulmonary infarction on the right, uh, some atelectasis as well. He's basically a complete resolution of his uh, saddle emboli uh, after catheter-directed therapy. Uh, but otherwise, a phenomenal result just with long duration of um, TPA. The follow-up echo at hospital day six prior to discharge basically showed normal LV, normal RV, which is impressive. Uh, no pulmonary hypertension at all. So he's completely normalized with long uh, dose of TPA. So in summary, we have a 24-year-old male uh, with submassive, and I would call this massive pulmonary embolism. He's transferred to ECMO Capable Center. That was the first and foremost. We wanted to get him here in case we need to put him right on ECMO. You always want to do ECMO before you get TPA. We actually gave him TPA five milligrams in each lung immediately, and then one milligram per hour for 40 hours. We washed him clinically. Uh, his O2 requirements are rates precipitously dropped, and because he was so young, we felt that he was tolerating the procedure well. His bleeding was, we had no bleeding, so we felt like given his risk, we would just continue for as long as we felt possible. Uh, balancing this out, obviously, with the bleeding risk, we gave him for 40 hours and a complete resolution of his thrombus, a complete normalization of his RV, uh, and the patient felt traumatic. We were on call, ready to bring him back for thrombectomy if needed, uh, but, if, but uh, fortunately for him, he did not need that uh, and responded well, given the freshness of the clock. He was recently seen in clinic. He's actually doing quite well on his DOAC. Um, the key thing here is he got catheter therapy with a very, very close monitoring uh, by a team approach. And with that, I'll say thank you very much. Uh, again, this emphasizes that teamwork makes the dream, dream work. Uh, here at Piedmont Atlanta, we have a combined team of vascular surgery and intervention cardiologists that work well together for our patients with pulmonary embolism. And we're uh, very proud to be a member of our per team here at Piedmont Atlanta. And this is how catheter therapy saved my patient. Thanks so much. Hope to see you uh, at Sky uh, 2021 in Chicago. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity to present here at uh, CBI. Thank you.